Yeah. 
Hey, welcome to another term of Connect Groups. I just want to encourage you all and congratulate you for making a good investment with your time. Thank you for pouring into relationships and also pouring some time into getting into God's Word. See, the Bible says iron sharpens iron, which actually means that discipleship is a group activity. We actually need each other to pray, support, encourage each other in order to grow in our relationship with God. So well done in making the time for Connect Group. Over this next four fortnights, we're going to be starting a brand new series called Identity Thief. And it's all about reclaiming our God-given identity. It's going to be amazing. Let's get straight into it. When I was a kid, my parents took me to Adventure World, a local theme park that is down the road at Bibra Lake. And one of the attractions at Adventure World was the Crazy Mirror Hall. I don't know if you've seen this before. It's basically a whole line of different mirrors and each mirror has a little deliberate defect, a little bend or, or a little crooked back. And uh, the reason for this is when you stood in front of the mirror, um, the defect, the 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 distortion and the bend would actually cause your reflection to change. So you'd see yourself, but you'd see a, a, a little bit of a distorted view of yourself. And I remember as a young, skinny uh, little kid seeing uh, the first mirror and, and all of a sudden I'd shrunk to under three feet and how it exaggerated my facial features and my big nose was even bigger. And I was like, whoa, what is this magic? I mean, it was so convincing. I actually thought that that was what I look like. All of a sudden I had changed. How is, how have I changed? How is this reflection of me actually really what I didn't think I looked like that? Um, that's really uh, what uh, those crazy mirror halls do. And uh, for those of you who've never seen one of them, it's lots of fun. But in this generation, we don't have crazy mirror halls anymore, but we do have Snapchat filters. And it gives you the same sort of um, like uh, outcome, you know, a distorted view of what you and I really look like. The more I read the word, the more I realize that actually with all, within all of us is actually two types of identities. We have our fake identity, our false identity, which is how we see ourselves. And it's actually a distorted view. And we have our real identity, the way God sees us, the one who created us and what he says over our life. And unfortunately, our real identity is often very different from our fake identity. Over the next couple of weeks, what we're going to do is identify our false identity. And we're going to try to bring it in line with the word of God. God, so that we can live our lives according to the way God has called us to live our lives. Well, let's get into our first passage of scripture, Numbers 13. Uh, before we get into it, I want to give you a little bit of context, right? So God has spoken to the Israelites and he's promised them that he's going to be with them and give them victory as they take over the land of Canaan. Moses sends out 12 spies to check out the land and they've just come back in from their expedition. And this is what they report. Numbers chapter 13 verse 27 and 28 says this, they gave Moses this account. We went into the land to which you sent us and it does flow with milk and honey. Here is its fruit. But the people who live there are powerful and the cities are fortified and very large. We even saw descendants of Anak there. Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, We should go up and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do it. But the men who had gone up with him said, We can't attack these people. They are stronger than we are. And they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. They said the land we explored devours those living in it. And all the people we saw there are of great size. All right, what's going on in this story? Twelve guys go on the same mission. They go to the same place. They encounter the same people and they face the same situations. And yet they come back and two of them give a completely contrary report to the other ten. Two say, we can definitely do it. God is with us. We're going to see victory. These people are gone. 
The other 10 said, are you crazy? There is no way we could do this. This land devours its people and they are too strong for us. Why the two contrary reports? I mean, how can you go to the same thing, see the same thing and come back with such opposing reports? Well, the answer is found in verse 33. You see, the 10 that went said this. They said, we seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes and we looked the same to them. It was the way they saw themselves that changed the way they saw the situation. They saw themselves as weak and powerless and insignificant and easily defeated. And even though they never asked a single inhabitant, hey, what do you think about us? They said, if we see ourselves that way, then I guarantee you they see themselves that way. Every time I go into the mirror, I see weak, insignificant, easily defeated and therefore that's probably the way how everybody else sees me. They projected their false identity onto every single other person. But that was not the case with Joshua and Caleb. Joshua and Caleb knew that God loved them, that God had called them, God had anointed them, that God was going with them. And if God is going with us, then who can stand against us? And because they saw themselves different they projected that on other people. They knew that God was with them and they would see an absolute victory. That's why there was two completely contrasting reports. Friends, I'm here to tell you that God's report is the report you and I are supposed to believe. God is our creator and he knows us better than we know ourselves. His assessment of our Our identity is the accurate one. Everything else is a distortion of the truth. And this is how God sees you. In Him, He says you are a new creation. In Him, you are adopted into His family. You are loved. You are chosen. You are filled with His Spirit. You have been given spiritual gifts. You have not been given a spirit of fear. You are an overcomer. You are holy. And you are able to do greater things than even what Jesus did. That is who you are. That's the truth. Everything else is a distortion. You know, the question that all of us have to ask is whose assessment of our identity are we going to believe? You see, the ending of that Bible story is so sad. Uh, It tells us that because the 10 men chose to believe their false identity, an entire generation of Israelites missed out on entering the promised land. They believed a false identity and it was so costly. It didn't just impact their future, but it impacted the future of their family, their community, and everyone missed out on what God had planned for them. You know, when I was younger, uh, every family, every person has a nickname. And uh, in my family, my nickname was The Crow. It's because I was the darkest uh, skin color in my entire household. And so they all mucked around and they called me The Crow. Uh, But when I was Growing up, uh, when I was about maybe nine or 10 years old, I also found out that in the Indian culture, the darker your skin was, um, the less attractive you were, the the less uh, beautiful you were considered. And so people who were darker were less uh, 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 worth while less significant than those who were of fairer complexion. And so when someone called me Crow, it was, Uh, now starting to form an identity. It was starting to form this thing, thinking that I was ugly, that I was less worthy and less significant than everybody else in my family and in my community. That sort of thinking started to affect my emotions. It started to affect my behavior. I became the class clown. I thought to myself, you know what, if I'm ugly and I'm never gonna get a girlfriend through my looks, I'll get them through my humor. In fact, it even impacted my relationship with Sharon. When Sharon started liking me and we started going out, uh, I actually thought, because she's such a beautiful girl, one day she's gonna wake up and go, what am I doing with this guy? And she will just leave me. And so I couldn't give her my whole heart because I expected 
our relationship to break down. In fact, every time she complimented me about my looks, I thought she was mocking me. I thought she was actually making fun of me. I just want you to know what a false identity can actually do to relationships to your future. It can distort the way you behave and it distorts your relationships. What one day God addressed me. One day God in his kindness spoke to me from Psalm 139 verse 13 to 14. It says this, for you formed me in my inner inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well. The revelation in that scripture wasn't that David was fearfully and wonderfully made. The revelation was that David's soul knew it really well. David had a revelation that he was fearfully and wonderfully and marvelously made. And every time he felt like he lacked, every time he felt insignificant, every time he felt weak, he would remind himself of the revelation, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. He would stop that false identity and its lies. He would actually identify it and then he would replace it and declare that he was fearfully and wonderfully made by God. This is what every believer needs to do. We need to identify and address the false identity, stop it in its tracks, and we need to replace it with what God says about you because that is really who you are. Amen. We're going to go into our groups right now and we're going to answer three questions. The first thing is this, what did you personally get out of this teaching session? Secondly, which of the following statements about your real identity do you struggle to believe the most and why? Finally, why don't we close this session by praying for one another. Next week, we're going to find out how false identities are formed. So I will see you back then.